Thank you very much for your time. I'm Adam Stern from Resonon. We make hyperspectral systems, hyperspectral cameras, and we sell them all over the world. And today I have the luxury of talking about somebody else's research. This afternoon I'll talk about an interesting development that we're working on um, for remote sensing. But here uh, we'll talk just about a bit about research and um, there's just a small amount of promotion and that's just that this research group is using our instrument. But um, mostly I want to talk about algae blooms, which is a really exciting field using, it's an exciting research field that uses hyperspectral imaging and um, it has important, many important impacts in, in, in humans. In particular, the algae blooms affect municipal water quality. So uh, in brief, these algae blooms, um, they're near, they often occur near municipal water intakes and they pose serious health risks. And there's a lot of research going on amongst biologists and ocean scientists uh, studying these, especially with hyperspectral imaging. In particular, a lot of the data that has come over the last decade and a half has come from satellites, which admittedly has um, large spatial resolution. Um, so, but you can see here that these uh, algaes have distinct spectral signatures. And the particular research we're going to talk about is this group from NOAA, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And they have a center for doing research on the Great Lakes in the United States, in particular in Lake Erie. And you can see in Western Lake Erie, there's these various um, cities and each one of those, of course, has m many water intakes. And there's a strong, in Lake Erie in particular, there's um, a lot of algae blooms that pose these health risks. So this research group that has our instrument, um, they're wonderful people, they're very smart, and um, they do fantastic research and they're doing weekly flyovers in a manned aircraft over Western Lake Erie and uh, using the hyperspectral cameras to get data. They use uh, our visible plus near infrared imager. And so here is from one of their papers, they're flying it in a manned aircraft. And uh, so you can see over here on the right, there's um, that brown box is the GPS IMU and there's a the little black thing sticking out is the hyperspectral camera. And this is data from Andrea. Andrea. And she's the one who's really running the show here. Um, and when she first showed this data at a, pre uh, a ocean science conference in the US recently, uh, she claimed that when she showed this data to the physical oceanographers that they were all very thrilled with the wave patterns. But that's secondary. Uh, the primary focus is on, on the algae. This is an RGB image, but it comes from the hyperspectral data that she's taken. And um, Point Pele is the national park right there in, in western Lake Erie. And so this is also in Lake, uh, western Lake Erie. And what they're using, one of the tools, the analytical tools they're using is this cyanobacteria index, which just uses these three bands. There are other methods that the researchers are using to analyze the data. Uh, primarily, it's principal component analysis, Verimax rotated principal component analysis after smoothing and derivatives. But the cyanobacteria index is easy to understand, easy to calculate, and used quite a bit. Um, and it, and higher values of the index me, imply higher concentrations of algae. And so uh, what makes this research, one of the things that makes this research interesting is that this is the first systematic effort to map these algae blooms from a, a, a manned aircraft, an aircraft that's uh, flying lower than a satellite. The satellites that have these hyperspectral imagers on them, they have 100 meters or a kilometer resolution. And of course, we, and, and with this manned aircraft, we have one meter resolution. And so this also is from, from Andrea, Dr. Vanderwood. And so the one on the left is from uh, the MODIS satellite of, of Western Lake Erie. And the one on the right is from the OCLI satellite. And you can see the very coarse spatial resolution. 
And then Dr. Vanderwood has, um, she has superimposed then the, the tracks from one of her flights over Lake Erie, and you can see obviously that there's much finer spatial resolution. Um, one of the good things that's coming out of this effort of hers, besides studying the algae blooms in their own right, is that she's taking, they're taking this information and they're um, making reports, weekly reports that go to the Environmental Protection Agency so that there's actual government monitoring now of these algae blooms specifically for municipal water intakes. Um, and in addition, this data, this hyperspectral data is online, available online and um, at GLERL, the Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory, they are creating a US government database of hyperspectral data on Western Lake Erie. And that data is available for everybody. The data sets are huge, um, but they're available. There's a, a website where you, can, where you can download it, and here's the dates of the flights, and that list of dates goes all the way on down. And if you click on them, then you get this picture on the right which shows you where the tracks go, and you can download the data. So, so this is cool. This is the first US government national database of hyperspectral data, or a, at least easily access, accessible database. Yeah. And, then, and that's, that's, the, that's the whole presentation. Um, and mostly what I'd like to convey is that studying algae blooms with hyperspectral imaging is a really exciting field of research amongst ocean scientists and biologists. And um, it's very popular in the US, and this is a worldwide problem for which hyperspectral imaging has a unique solution that's very powerful. And um, so for anybody who's interested in the biological applications and the oceanographic applications of hyperspectral imaging, these harmful algae blooms um, are, are, are very exci very exciting and important topic. So uh, thank you very much. I will see you this afternoon when we talk more technically about the hyperspectral, some of the developments uh, that are coming uh, in, in the new hyperspectral cameras. Um, thank you very much for your time.